Yo, what is going on Guardians and welcome back to another Destiny 2 gameplay video. In this video, I wanted to talk specifically about learning how to not crutch on your special weapon. I know it's really, really easy in the current sandbox of things to uh, basically just have your special weapon out all the time. I mean, I see players very frequently who just refuse to pull any kind of a primary weapon out. They just run around with a special weapon. And you can play with moderate success doing that. And I think that's the trap is people get, they get comfortable with performing pretty well when you I mean you could be performing really well. I mean, <laughs> I think that, I think that primary gun skill is one of those things that could take your gameplay, uh, honestly, to the next level. I think that primary gun skill is often the difference between a 25 elimination match and a 40 elimination match. I mean, I had I had three 50 bombs today using double primaries. I had two 55 kill matches uh, using this loadout that you see in the gameplay here, using a bow and a hand cannon with the lucky pants. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing that's OP or broken or you know, super obnoxiously strong about this build whatsoever. But it just comes down to placing shots well and, and a lot of other things that go into primary gun skill that I want to talk about in this video. So how do you take your gameplay to the next level? Maybe. Um, maybe targeting your primary gun skill is that thing. So, um, just I know I'll get questions in the, the comment section. The bow is the monarch. The hand cannon is the home for loss. It's a 110 hand cannon with quick draw on it from year one. You can pull it out of your collections most likely. Most of us have access to that via the collections at this point. And I'm running the six shot Goldie uh, subclass as well. All right, let's dive right into this. First thing I want to talk about is know the limitations of your primary weapon. Know the limitations. So at what range is it effective? Is it effective up close? Is it effective far away? What does that mean? How does that translate into how you play your matches? Well, that means that knowing the limitations of your firearm, you might need to create gaps. So you need to back off, create some distance so that you can use your primary weapon effectively. Maybe you need to close gaps. Maybe your primary weapon is a sidearm or an SMG, and you really need to basically get in that, you know, 15 foot range of players, and that's really the sweet spot where you need to start hovering and trying to close gaps. So know the limitations of your primary weapon and let that affect how you position yourself uh, in these gunfights, whether that's closing gaps or creating gaps. Is the aerial accuracy of your uh, primary weapon good? Is it a hand cannon? Is it a sidearm? Is it an SMG? things that can uh, hit pretty accurately in their intended ranges from the air. Or is it a scout? Is it a pulse? Is it the kind of thing that you really need to uh, make sure that you keep your feet planted? Jumping around the map is going to get you killed, and you need to keep your feet planted. Know the limitations of your weapon, and let that affect how you play each match. Leverage the strengths and avoid the weaknesses of your primary weapon. That could be the difference maker in your gunplay. Next thing I want to talk about is positioning. Okay. When it comes to primary weapons, often just straight line people is the easy thing to do, but it's not the smart thing to do. You don't necessarily want to just run, hold forward, and approach people from the angle that they're already facing. A lot of times, I, I see comments like this in my uh, videos all the time where people are like, why are people never looking at this guy? I wish I could get these lobbies. Well, it's not that people aren't looking at me. It's that I took the time to go on a flanking route. I knew where their aggro was, and I positioned myself differently so that I could get the first shot off with my primary weapon and make force them to, to, to make a play, honestly, to turn and engage me and either outgun me and make a play or die or run away, you know? So a lot of times it just comes down to positioning. So th sometimes that means abandoning a lane. I see a lot of players are just too stubborn to abandon a lane. They sit in a lane and they look down it. And, you know, they're trying to control the lane, control the lane, even when two or three opponents step into that lane to challenge them. And they just, they keep just peeking in and out, peeking in and out and recovering their health. You're not going to win the lane sometimes. Sometimes that lane, you need to abandon it. You need to let it go and go on a different route, go on a flanking route, you know, break out to the right or to the left and try and find a different way to come back into that lane at a different position uh, than the one that you're currently at. So learn how to abandon lanes when you need to. Sometimes it means uh, being successful with your primary weapon means team shooting. And that doesn't necessarily mean sit at the back of the lane with a teammate or two or three. That's not what I mean by team shooting. Sometimes that, sh sometimes you need to do that to control lane, but other times it means running around the map near 
uh, one of your teammates. You see your teammate is making a break for B, and you want to run to B as well. Maybe not take the exact same route, but you're looking in the same directions. So that if an opponent were to, to, to jump out or challenge from a particular angle, both of you could get shots, and their attention would be split, and they would have to prioritize one or the other uh, of you. You know what I mean? So not, it doesn't necessarily mean team shooting at the back of the lane, but making sure that you're near your teammates and you're shooting at the same things your teammates are shooting at. That can uh, take your gameplay to the next level. The next thing I want to talk about is map rotation. Uh, when it comes to using your primary weapons, uh, you know, or anything that's not your special weapon, it could be your grenades, could be your super, and using those things effectively, often that, often that means knowing when the map is rotating when the map is changing in terms of where the enemy is going to start spawning, where they're going to be coming out of, what doors they're going to be coming out of, what positions they're going to be challenging considering where they're spawning. So you have to be sort of cognizant of what's happening on the map. You know, not not just looking for red on the radar, but looking for, for blue on the radar. Because when you know where your teammates are, you can make an educated guess about where your opponents are going to be based on where your teammates are. If my teammates are all over here at A, well, obviously, I'm not going to see a lot of red at A. I'm, I'm probably looking over at the C spawn, uh, you know, for the new spawn location of my opponents. And so it's just knowing about what's happening on the map, and that can give you the edge on opponents as you're starting to look, okay, well, if they're spawning at A, that means he, they're going to come out of likely this door or that door. So let me just put my sights on this door real quick. Sure enough, guy comes running out. Bam, bam, bam. You get a couple of shots off. Now he's, he's weak. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of information you can take in that's going to increase the overall effectiveness of your primary gunplay. Map rotation is part of that. Also, super timing is a really big part of knowing how the map is changing. If you see that the enemy team, you know, four of them just died, and now you're making an educated decision about where they're going to respawn, and you know there's going to be like four of them, well, heck, if I've got a Nova Warp or a Golden Gun or, you know, a, a, an Arc Strider Super or whatever maybe if I got a Super that I can roam with, maybe I'm going to pop that and push that, that new spawn location so that as they're spawning and they're a, a little bit, you know, they got their backs to a wall and they can't, when their backs are to a wall, they can't kite you, right? They can't just take you on a hike and kite your Super out. Their back's against a wall. They have to go through you if they want to get away, right? So it's a really good opportunity for you to pop a super because there's not a lot of options for them. They need to team fire you or, you know, try and run through you. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is this. When it comes to having good, uh, effective usage of your primary weapons, that oftentimes that means knowing the synergy that exists within your build, within your subclass. What perks do you have? So if, for example, I'm, I'm running a 110, oftentimes that means grenade, one shot to the head. So sometimes that's what I'm going to do. Or grenade throwing knife, grenade melee ability, um, one shot from your primary, two shots from your primary, plus a melee ability will kill the guy. You have to know, you have to know the math. Okay, here are all the things I have available to me in my build. This does this much amount of damage, this does this much amount of damage, my primary weapon does X amount of damage. So you're starting to make these combinations. Okay, so one, two, three, I can use these three things to secure a kill, maybe just these two things to secure a kill. Oftentimes for me, uh, you know, just a bow shot to the body in a melee. If a guy is rushing me and I just jump up over his head and I just hip fire the bow straight down and instantly follow it up with a melee, I can, I can clean up the kill that way. So you have to know your build, know the synergy within that build. That's gonna help you use your primary weapons much more effectively. A lot of times people just try and put enemy uh, you know enemy opponents down with just their primary weapon pop 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 whatever it may be sometimes you can be a lot faster and a lot more efficient if you're managing your melee and grenade abilities uh, and even some of your exotic abilities if you're using any particular exotic armor so I hope this was helpful for you hopefully you can leverage some of these uh, sort of tips and tactics into um, taking your gameplay to the next level when it comes to your primary gunplay. And maybe that'll be the difference between your 25 kill matches and your 40 kill matches, or 50, even 60. So best of luck to you. Hopefully this was helpful, and I hope to catch you in the Crucible.